Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Phantom Group Podcast. It is I, Merlin the Mighty, and I have, of course, the anime hero here. Hello? Yeah. And today we're going to be talking about something that Hero's been trying to get me to talk about for a couple months now. He's been trying to track me down. We're going to discuss Beast Wars. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But tell me, why exactly did you want to bring up Beast Wars in conversation? You recently watched it, right? Yeah, I recently watched it for the first time in total completion. You never finished it before now? No, no, because as a kid, you know, I never saw the whole thing. It wasn't until 2016 when I watched the whole show from beginning to end with the inclusion of Beast Machines, and then I'm like, you know, this is better than I remembered. Yeah, man, uh, Beast, Beast Wars, honestly, of all the shows that I watched growing up, I think in terms of writing, it's one of the best. Like, it still holds up. I watched it when I was a kid. Like, I managed to see the whole thing, thankfully, and then I went back to it years later, like, when I was going into college. Like, hey, you know, they had the whole thing up on YouTube, and I went through it over a summer, and that was, like, one of the things I did. And I was like, wow, this show really holds up. It's still really good. And then a couple years ago, I watched it again. So I've seen the show three times, and I saw Beast Machines, too. And I'll tell you, man, Beast Wars is just really, really awesome. That's, like, my Transformers growing up. Like, I think the original Gen 1 guys are cool, like, you know, Optimus Prime's cool, but... Beast Wars, I think, is just where it's at, you know, absolutely. That's what I grew up with, and it's really good. It holds up really well, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I guess, uh, how do you want to do this, man? You want to go through the season by season, want to talk about characters, keep it, like, sound organized, or what's on your mind? I was thinking characters maybe, like, go one at a time, because uh, I was actually watching it again, and I'm sort of, like, barely in the season two material. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, I don't know, the first one that comes to mind, obviously, with, uh, <laughs> well, I guess it'll be more easy to talk about is the ones that got kicked off the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, starting with, uh, I, I guess either Scorponok. <laughs> well, alright. Scorponok, I like Scorponok. You know, one thing that was kind of interesting about him is mm-hmm. that he seems like he's kind of just a dumb thug, but he's actually Megatron's number two, like, second in command, and he's probably, like, a scientist, too. But yeah, he's pretty dumb. I never really got that. I, I want to say that was something of an inconsistency because in the early episodes, even when he talked, he spoke like in a very dumb, simplest caveman way. He'd be like, Scorp- Megatron leader, Scorponok loyal to Megatron. <laughs> but remember though, he also he was smart because he developed that one like B thing that like I guess got on the Optimus. And, yeah, like, he did. Stuff, he, <laughs> yeah. he did. But the thing is, even when he makes inventions, they kind of flop because that thing was intended for Optimus to be kind of turned into a coward, and it gave the reverse okay. effect. So. I kind of think that he's one of those guys that Megatron kept around just because he was easy to control, like he was loyal. Yeah, you know? he, he took advantage of that loyalty because he was, like, so blinded. <laughs> Definitely. But, but also, um, yeah. it's pretty basic, but I like Scorponok's design. I always thought he was cool, cool man. He shot the missiles. I thought he was not much of a personality, but he, he was a good, like, early Predacon. Yeah, I thought he was, like, all right. It's just that, I don't know. <laughs> Even yeah. in the scenes he's in, he's sort of, like, all right. I just never found him, like, too much of a favorite. Yeah, because um, Pterosaur, on the other hand, he was more like the, uh, like... Scarscream. Yeah, he has a Scarscream equivalent, but at the same time, he's definitely, uh, you know, a bit doing his own agenda. He didn't have blind loyalty, you know, like Scorponok, but even then, he de- definitely has, like, this wimp- wimpy side to him, because he knows, like, when he's... Uh, <laughs> outmatched. Yeah, when he's outmatched, he's like, well, fuck, fuck everything. <laughs> Yeah, and compared to, like, Scorponok, he's the opposite, where he, you're right, he had his own agenda, and he, he was very similar to Starscream, and since he was always trying to get a one-up, but he was never very good at it, you yeah. know, but he had a lot more presence, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the moment he got power, he will abuse it, but <laughs> when he doesn't have any power, that's just what he is, he's just powerless, because I, I remember, uh, I think it was the same episode where, uh... <clears throat> Oh, yeah, it was. I forgot the name of the episode, but shit, it, it's the one where they think Rat Trap is, like is joined forces with them, and he briefly does, and then oh yeah, yeah, and Terrorstar immediately takes advantage of that by saying like, oh, he's my servant, and they take on Megatron pretty easy. <laughs> but then by the end of the episode, they're on, they're under attack. What do we do? It's like yes, <laughs> like yes, Terrorstar. Whatever shall we do? You're gonna let me lead Megatron? When they, they always lead a fool into battles or something like that. I don't know, but he just straight up told them like, "Yeah, you're. It's always best to have like the dumbass go first And Terrasaur, like the dumbass he is, doesn't get what he was saying, and he does it anyways. Like you dumbass fool. 
because he he really has no charisma either. Because um, when he has that spark power up, he's only options on now. I'll lead, and then Tarantula just really didn't give a fuck. And then Scorpion is oh. like, I'm only loyal to Megatron, and then. They're like, hey, I'm second in command. Why did he? Why did he give you the order? Well, <laughs> command. <laughs> fuck this. <laughs> so it's like, fuck. He has no charisma to lead anybody. <laughs> Fucking hell. No, he did. no. Even um, the episode where Cheetor, you know, discovered that teleportation thing by accident, and Terrorstar sent over there to the base. His first thing is immediately, hey, we should join up, Dinobot. He always <laughs> wants to join with somebody or have someone below him. One of the two, but even then, like, Dinobot turns him down right away, and he's like, this guy's, like, overstepping his boundaries yeah. so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think of Pterosaur? I think is a pretty cool <laughs> guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he, I don't know, I think he definitely had some potential, but, I don't know, they, they kind of did everything with him that I guess they wanted to. I thought that his design was cool. Uh, I don't know. He, he's memorable. Definitely one of the more memorable developments for the early season. Well, that's for sure. Right. He was always kind of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, he was a red pterodactyl. But the thing is, like, I kind of appreciated that the voice actors always added like an animal element to their voice. <laughs> yeah, him with a screech. <laughs> yeah, he always did a little evil screech thing. Yeah, but almost, the thing is, man, he's actually kind of important to Megatron's army because... It clearly showed that having flyers was a big advantage, like in the Beast Wars. In the first season, you're right. Battles were like crap. There's two flyers. Optimus had to like was always outmatched. Yeah, they, especially when they always like they were the fastest of the group too, because they would get to the stasis spot like a lot quicker or different locations or bombard them from the air while keeping mm-hmm. long distance. So, you know, Terrasaur was important in that department, but. I'm going to jump a little ahead of characters because I want to say yeah. that the loyalty aspect and the flyer like benefit of Scorponok and Pterosaur was basically combined together into Inferno. Yes, Inferno. Yes, my <laughs> queen. Now, you know, I, let me tell you, I feel, like, I feel like Inferno is one of those characters that probably has like a mixed reaction. Like, how do you feel about Inferno? Um... Well, first things first, I, I wanted to bring up that I always found it fascinating that with the stasis pods that were like, you know, for those other Transformers that they weren't awake yet or whatever, I always found it uh-huh. fascinating that they could easily change size by being reprogrammed. But what I found kind of bullshit hypocrite is that, you know, with Silver Boys, like with Black Arachnia, they're like, oh, but you could be one of the good guys, you were one of us, but it doesn't say the same shit for, for either Quick Strike or Inferno. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird, like, yeah, technically all the ones they find were actually originally Maximals, but they were reprogrammed. So, yeah, so I'm like, couldn't did you guys try to fight to get them back, you know? Yeah, they kind of give up on them, yeah, they're evil, fuck them. They're evil. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, man, it's kind of messed up. Yeah, so I'm like, mm, you know, we could have had a little something there, but Inferno... Um, Inferno, I think, was insane, honestly. He got two of them yeah, yeah. by his mode. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely, like, I mean, even when he first appeared, like, he was set up that he was a real ant, and then, you know, protecting the... For the colony. For the, col- for the colony, the royalty, or the queen, all three. I, would you say that Inferno has honor, though? i say he does, he definitely has pride, but the thing is, it's, like, it's a very one-sided pride, because it's, like... I want to say it's, it's not like Scorponok, where, in case of Scorponok, it seemed more like a respect... But Inferno seems more like it was just like a devotion that wasn't really real. It was more like of an obligation. Mm-hmm. I could agree with that. Yeah, but he definitely was insane. I mean, he definitely seemed like the <laughs> he seemed like a big powerhouse also for the Predacons because uh, he, he, he yeah he kind of took Dinobot's place in a way. But at the same time, because even when he was around, like the Scorponok and Terrorstar were still there, but. Uh, and hey, that flamethrower advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that flamethrower killed, pretty much killed Tarantulas. <laughs> so I'm just like, shit. Yeah. yeah, that and, you know, destruction toward the nature. But after that, though, like in season two, that's when he started getting really downplayed. He started to be more like the, you're not that dangerous anymore. Oh. <laughs> because he gets overshadowed by, um, what was the name of that Predacon? The, um, the crab. Rampage. Yeah, Rampage. Like, Rampage was oh, like, oh, no. Oh, Rampage. Rampage was like, now an even crazier <laughs> version of Inferno, Rampage and it can't die. <laughs> scary, like, 
debating levels of power, like just God, like this evil experiment thing. But, oh man. Like, yeah. I mean, shit. But the thing is also, like, was he truly evil or was it because of the experimentation that made him evil? Uh, if I remember correctly, I think he was a base Predacon, so he was evil, but I think he was made worse by the torture, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have to go back to that, but, yeah, we're jumping well, a little... We're, we're jumping a little... not quite as evil, though, because they... Remember that one episode with the, um... Yeah. <sighs> the man, tape? There we go. That was the episode was I wanted like, to mention earlier. Man, good. Good. Grand. Like. Dark. I know. Then like. It's not oh, evil. Dark. <laughs> so like, oh. I like that guy. Rampage is really interesting. His like whole relationship with Death Charge, like going after him, was a really cool subplot. Yeah, I, I want that to be explored a bit more because to me, Death Charge was like the Batman of the group. <laughs> I mean, it was the, really cool, but the yeah, show ended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the wings and everything with like tip charge, <laughs> like fucking. I must. Wasn't kill. he in, like literally? He showed up in the episode, like the series ended, like what four or five episodes later or something. I want to say like about mm, a little less than that. Uh, fuck, I don't remember. He was really close to the end of the show, or like he's really cool, but ah, oh, series is over. Yeah. Can't remember the toys exactly. I had. Yeah, I still have a bunch of the toys actually, but I I have them too. The death charge. So it was kind of interesting to see, like you know, the toy come to life. I'm like, oh, so that's who he was. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's go yeah, a few steps yeah, back with the predicon. I guess we'll yeah. stick predicons and then move on to Maximals later. But yeah, yeah so yeah. we talk about Scorponok, Pterosaur, and Inferno, and of course by the end Pterosaur. of season one, Pterosaur and Scorponok they get killed by being dropped into the lava. And they did. Just yeah. Wiped out by that meteor. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it just really sucks. It's just like. <laughs> So wait, you don't feel like you're big fans of them, but you still kind of want them to get a better send off. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, especially compared to like other characters like Dinobot or, um, I guess Dev Charge had a bit of a send off too, but I don't know, I just really hate it when characters just get ignored, especially for the reason because of toy sales. That, <laughs> in, you know, if you're going to let them go, at least let them go with some dignity, but there it's like, they're not even mentioned again. The only time they're mentioned is when Black Arachnia is saying, like, you're low on on armies or on troops like during the the transmetal thing in the beginning it's always like and that's the only time to get reference and that's it no one brings them up no one mentions <laughs> well, well think about this way here i mean the, the maximals aren't going to care too much because they were their enemies and the yeah. predacons really care about them so you know who's going to talk about it yeah i guess but i don't know i think it would have been a nice way to like I think the only uh, the only opportunity they had of saying those things is if Silver, you know, since Silver Bubble's still with them at the time, this is him saying like, but uh -huh. like, what about the fallen comrades? Leave them, then you know that would have been a, a nice little moment there, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it would have been cool to you know, or maybe oh I know I know I, I don't have an idea. Okay, they fell in the lava, but what if they didn't fall all the way in? They're like still kind of like halfway to the torso or something, and they're like shattered. And then uh -huh. they're saying, like, please make a drone help us. And then he commands to, like, Super Bowl, eliminate them. <laughs> like, like, what they like, like, you are useless to me now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Super Bowl would be, like, hesitant, but why? They're our comrades. We can help them. And then that's when Kick Strike does his thing, showing his loyalty to Megatron. And then Inferno, obviously, you know, headshots him or burns him more or throws him back into the lava. I don't know. <laughs> That's dark, man. I don't know. I think that would have been a cool way to make Super Bowl change sides, also. And <laughs> I feel like, oh, these guys are kind of messed up. Yeah, I mean, that way they would have gotten more brutal. I mean, they would have more of a significance from them leaving rather than just like fall in lava. No one brings it up. <laughs> <laughs> make it a little more worthy for the plot. Maybe. Yeah. They would have been like, man, you remember this kid's show? They just killed us, like Terrasaur and Scorpionock. Man, those assholes. <laughs> 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 yeah, but. I guess the next one of the flyers would be Waspinator, the one that uh, outlived everyone. <laughs> Waspinator is kind of badass in a way. Like, <laughs> that guy could take more damage than anyone. Because <laughs> he's a gag character. Well, he became a gag character as it kept going. <laughs> yeah, like, literally, he lives to feel pain. <laughs> oh, Waspinator don't like pain. <laughs> You know, but Waspinator is like, of all the, like, Predacons, though, he's probably the one that has, like, the best arc when you think about it. Yeah, the end. Because the he, very he, end. He, like, <laughs> he gradually gets sick of it, like, Waspinator's sick of being struck. Waspinator's sick of being evil. 
Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, he takes off his own brand. Was like, he takes off his Predacon logo. I'm like, oh, man. He went all... <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, like, he's actually, like, for the most part, really loyal. And the funny thing is, Megatron knows that. Oh. Like, even though he finds him annoying, he always keeps him around. Like, you know, he might not be the smartest guy, but I can always kind of rely on Lost. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of, he has his uses. <laughs> he does. Yeah, he has his uses. Actually, you know, my favorite, uh, action, my favorite moment of Lost Standard was when he got the Death by Starscream. Oh. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, it kind of shows that he wasn't exactly, like, the best of the bunch, and then I guess it doesn't say too much either, because it is Starscream, <laughs> so... Yeah. Yeah, but... The, yeah, thing, the, the thing is with Waspinator, there was one time, though, he was going to betray Megatron, and that was, like, the only time he's ever done it, is when um, he was protecting the disc, and Dinobot was going to take it. That's true. Yeah, that was, like, that was the one time that he was going to... But then again, see how the way the series ended, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. It's like, I'm tired of being the joke. If anything, you should probably should have just asked, can I join the, the, the Maximals? <laughs> like, please. <laughs> you let, you let, you let Dinobot join. <laughs> I know, like, he was, like, meaner than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Waspinator, who am I going to hurt? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, it's like, come on, it's not going to hurt nobody. But then in Beast Machine, so he somehow... Made him like somehow got over there, like to their planet, to planet Cybertron, and then twist revealed that I'm like overdrive, like oh I'm Waspinator. <laughs> but the thing is though, it's so funny and sad is that so like Spider Man have no feelings for Biker <laughs> Oh, it's like shit. I thought I had something here. <laughs> like fuck. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's like I finally became a cool machine. I'm actually getting stuff done. I have my own army, but like, no, oh, I still lose. Still lose. Yeah. Uh, I guess that should lead to the spiders. That should, you guys, which one should we start with? Though? Oh, the one I found the most interesting was Tarantulas, because I felt like he could have been such a bigger villain, but he just wasn't. Tarantula. It's Tarantula. like He's actually kind of like the secondary villain of the show. To, the thing is though he's like and sometimes he's like empowered Megatron but then other times he kind of makes me think of Pterosaur <laughs> sometimes yeah cause there's some moments I feel like he's purposely like debunked into like this wimp uh, I remember the, the hilarious episode the one where Rhinox is like sneezing yeah like in that one like uh well the whole tone of that episode was silly but like on purpose but there's a time where they go to his base and he gets like taken out by his own trap which was like well the rock that they hit accidentally in the ceiling and then he gets hit by that he wakes up he's about to get a jump on them and they just knock the fuck out of him and even then that same episode megatron shoots him <laughs> into pieces <laughs> so it's yeah, like yeah he, he kind of raised from like being a gag character sometimes but other times he was like really intimidated too he was threatening because right off the bat when he gets cheetor he nearly killed him <laughs> Yeah, that was a scary episode when he when he had all those nightmares about it. He was he almost ate him. He almost yeah, ate yeah, him. yeah. That's the thing. Well, we found weird also that the Beast Boy characters they actually can eat people. I mean, eat things. Well, this is the thing. They're actually like partially organic, so I guess they feed on John, but they can also feed on other things too. Yeah, because you would see him eat mouses or rats or other things like or a, or a grass or yeah. Or right now, was eating beans, so just like yeah. So, that's what I found fast. Or in Dinobot's case, eat a clone of himself <laughs> with no, was, no, was, with no like <laughs> nothing affecting his judgment whatsoever. Just like what the hell? That was, that's that's that not was, a normal thing to do, man. <laughs> eh, you know, I guess the clone didn't have a soul or a spark in this case. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. Oh, I don't know. But then again, the idea of cloning, I was like, why can't you keep doing that? <laughs> I don't know, but anyways, yeah. back on Tarantulas, because I, I thought he was just so menacing towards the end where he knew that the planet was going to blow up, and he's like keeping things to himself. The thing is, this game with Megatron always go back and forth, where like, oh, I'll just think the spider thinks I'm not a, I'm not aware of anything, so I guess Megatron was a true mastermind for the longest time. Mostly, until the end, they started to kind of lose it. Yeah, so, yeah, Tarantulas was keeping his own agenda, then... I just find it like I really felt that it was really underused when he was able to control Black Arachnia because he went inside his her mind and then when yeah. he resurrected himself via Frankenstein, <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> I'm alive. Yeah, because the design was like uh, out of all the transmetals, I felt like his design was the biggest improvement because now he looks like more intimidating because he got those spikes on his head and then those extra 
extra yeah, legs. Yeah, yeah, he just looked more intimidating at that point, and then he could turn into a car, so that's also cool. <laughs> Man, I like how his gun was uh, the wheel. Yeah, so it's, it's like, it's the wheel. <laughs> Laser. <laughs> How's that work? Yeah. Well, then again, they, they were cool when they had their, like, leg pistol thing, so... They could fire machine guns from their own. Yeah, they're like, shit, going all gangs, all mafia. Because <laughs> they, they oh, took out yeah. Dinobot when they infiltrated the base, like, so easily. It's like, shit, they, they ganged them, they ganged up on it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, Tarantulas was, like, really cool for, like, that mad scientist vibe. Yeah. They really took that role, I think, pretty well. Yeah, because I feel like you were saying control of Black Aragnia, even, like, in the later... Towards the end of Beast Force, when she was turning transmetal, I was like, oh, she's going to lose her spark because of Tarantulas. And then I'm thinking, you know, I felt like that could have been played earlier or there's some, you know, constantly keep her in control. <laughs> or, I don't know, I felt that that could have led to some greater story potential if he was able to control other Predacons or something. Possibly. It could have been something. Yeah, or who knows, discover his own, like, make his own army or bring back characters from the dead. <laughs> But no, that never, that never happened. I don't oh, know. Exactly. Even though the spider web idea, I just felt like just that alone. The fact that I always thought the design of spiders, the fact they kind of looked like Energon or something, and then whoever was stuck in there, like they were doomed. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, I kind of always wanted him like to try to like attempt to kill Megatron, but he, they never showed any of that, from what I recall. Uh, he sort of, I think was planning to a lot, but I don't know if he ever tried to follow Yeah, through. I just want to see, like, an encounter, like, an actual confrontation, or, even when he was, at one point, he was, like, with the Maximals also, the joint forces, but in the end, I kind of was hoping he would, like, be able to backstab both parties. Yeah, he was an enemy for both sides, really. Mm, but then it never goes anywhere, because by the end of it, it ends up just going out, like, in a very crappy way. I mean, yeah, he went off terribly. Yeah, he, he, he gets a Razor, Razor Hawk, Tiger Hawk, or I forgot what it was called, I think it was Tiger Hawk. Yeah, Tiger Hawk, and then these spirit things come out of him, and then he's like, what the hell is that? And then, <laughs> that was it. I'm like, come on, you could do better than that. <laughs> yeah, so, I guess Black Arachnia is next. The one of the bad guys that went to the good side. Yeah, Black Arachnia was really cool. Like, at first, she, when she first came in there, she was just kind of a stop, like, one of the females. But once we started getting her character, like, she, she was, like, a really awesome villain who also liked Tarantula. She had her own agenda, and yeah. he planned to make her kind of like a bride of Frankenstein. Like, oh, I'll make her like me, so she'll be loyal to me. But she was just working on her own perspective, too. Mm -hmm. And then she meets up with Silverbolt and kind of falls in love with him. And then she slowly, she's kind of an anti-hero, and then she goes to the good side. Like, she's probably got one of the best arcs in the whole show honestly yeah actually you know i feel i just thought about what would have made it perfect if she what? was if she was the one to kill tarantulas yeah yeah that would have been the final way to go but no nah, that didn't happen that should have happened though you're right yeah they got her created yeah like i created you <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, then again, I guess he kind of learned from him in ways. They're always trying to outsmart one another. So it's kind of like an interesting relationship, sort of like a teacher-mentor type of route. Kind of a Sith sort of mentality, I yeah, guess. I, yeah, I guess that is true. <laughs> oh, God, so trying to just Sith Lord. <laughs> like, I must get power! <laughs> yeah, the ultimate power! Yeah, but yeah, they, they had a pretty interesting relationship, you're right. Uh, Black Rocky was always pretty cool. How, how do you feel about her uh, romance with Silver Bolt? Do you think it worked? Yeah, I guess it worked, but I just, but because of that, I can help but wonder, geez, we should have probably tried to get the other Predacons into the good, good side. Yeah, like, like, maybe, maybe if we got her, maybe we could, yeah, you're right. Like, I mean, he was, the other, a couple of them were Maximals before, guys, like, she. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there was a, he tried a little harder with her, like. Yeah, but it also helps when you have when they're the opposite gender. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's I think that's kind of the reason why. Because I mean, oh, we got a romantic element. <laughs> and also, I guess you could say if, if they converted all of them to the good side, Megatron would have had like nobody on his side. Well, the or end. or maybe that would have been you know the the oh, fuck, I forgot a good word. Or maybe that would have been you know the moral. <laughs> 
Oh, like, oh, man. Yeah, like, Megatron's, like, you know, you rule through, like, power and fear and intimidation. In the end, that leaves you with nothing. <laughs> like, fuck. No friends. That, that would have been interesting. Like, everybody just turns on the evil, big, bad. Yeah. Maybe it goes more powerful. That could have worked, actually. You're right. That's not a bad idea. I kind of like that idea. Yeah, so, this stuff with Beast Wars, I'm like, shit, this should be a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a Beast Wars not to, But it would be a weird title. It would be like, Beast Wars Reboot. Not to be, it's not a crossover between Beast Wars and Reboot. <laughs> yeah, no, people would go see that too, probably. Yeah. Mainframe presents Beast Wars versus Reboot. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, yeah, Black Mariah is alright, because I, I was just kind of find it weird, um, well, not weird, I guess, I guess this is the 90s talking, because when she first shows up, like, she always sort of had, like, this somewhat Asian look from her face, but even when she shows up, her first thing was, like, to fight with, like, these battle cries, you know, like, martial artists or something. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> that type of thing. But cool. it's like, well, Power Rangers was popular at the time, so... <laughs> Oh, Ever, and then and then you got Ninja Turtles too, so like you know those two, or like, Oriental type of things. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Well, then again, every now and then there's always like one little hint of yeah, you know that's a toy, that's an accessory. <laughs> that that's her extra body got to buy it. Yeah, because I remember whenever she would shoot like this arrow, like spear gun, and then it would be like a string to attach. I'm like, yeah, that's a toy for sure. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, hey, to yeah, we gotta market this somehow, guys. <laughs> like, get Black Mariah oh. and her like and her uh, launchable arrow spear. I don't know what they call it. <laughs> like, well, <Totally>. yeah, <laughs> uh, it's Inferno. <laughs> like this new Predacon <laughs> comes assaulted with the wings. Wings, it can fly and shoot a flamethrower. F- fire, <laughs> not, not part of the toy. <laughs> no. Or as the same in, in uh, Toy Story, not a flying toy. <laughs> not a flying toy. Oh. <laughs> well, hey, you, you could tell though that ratings were pretty good for the show because they got three seasons, so I'm sure that toy sales are probably doing pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I still have mine. They're not like in the best yeah. condition though. So. Oh. Uh, the my Optimus Prime is like pretty damaged, like scratched up in the front and on the this area. But um. Oh yeah, I think the have we talked about all the Predacons? Like, oh no, we talked. We haven't talked about Quick Strike, but there wasn't. Well, Quick no, Strike, there's nothing really to say. Yeah, because I mean, he was sort of the re- the visual uh, replacement for Scorpion, like, while Inferno was like Scorpion like, and Inferno. Quick Strike was sort of like the you know we have this new thing called Fusors, which I, was a cool idea. I guess, I, he, I guess he had more personality than Scorpion. Hmm. Because, because uh, I think without the the southern, the cowboy gimmick, it probably would be it? too much. I think his design is definitely much more. It's kind of fascinating because you know the whole snake tail and the, the scorpion, but I don't know. I I, 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 I do feel like Scorpionox design is a little more menacing because the tail's like on the on his back, so it kind of like reaches above, and then his hands are like these claws, and even his face looks meaner. And Quick Strike, actually, if you think about it, Quick Strike's face looks a little bit like a Hierophant's green. Yeah. That type of shape, uh, especially around the mouth area, but then again, I guess Quick Strike looks more creepy because his right hand's a fucking King Cobra and his left hand's like these Honestly, legs. Now that one of them, I guess, is the most intimidating, but I always kind of found Scorpionox to be a little scarier just because he was a little more quiet, like he wasn't as over the top, you know? Well, he, did, sh- he, he did shoot flies and missiles, so there's that. And yeah, then I mean, the laser beam with his fucking tail, but the Quick Strike was mostly just. Um, Ride him, cowboy. Yeah. Like, all right, vomit. Let's see who the fastest draw here. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, we, we are forgetting a, a major predator. Oh, oh, yeah. We're talking about... Um, should we save him, or should we save him until the end? Well, I, I know the big boss, but I, I, for a moment, they were talking about the... Um, ah, fuck. Well, I forgot his name again. Like, crabs. Uh, we talk, well, we talked about Rampage. He's Rampage a bit. Well, yeah, the thing is, he had like a little shred of humanity, but... I don't know, I feel like it could have been used for him because the fact that he was immortal, that Megatron, you know, like, took his fucking heart out and that's how he's controlling him, like, I literally has yeah. your heart in my hands, man. <laughs> Fuck. Basically owned him a slaver because he was kind of uncontrollable. He was, like, chaotic evil. Yeah. I don't know, I just felt they but, could have used more with him because his first appearance was just, like, straight-up horror. I mean... He was scary. He was just murdering. Oh, him. again, Tarantulas gets fucking wrecked. Like, in that episode, he was just torn around. Like, like, <laughs> everywhere, you're like, oh, God. Yeah, I was like, Fuck. It's, it went all predator. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, that was my whole intro, and they're fighting in the mist and stuff. Yeah, and then lightning like, was striking and everything, I'm like, well, fuck. I mean, Swordboard and Black Aranga barely got out of that shit alive. <laughs> they really did. Yeah. I don't know, it, it just feels like he never had that sense of danger again. Because there are times where he gets, like, runned over and then he regenerates or something, but... I don't know, I just felt there could have been more with him and then his conflict with Death Charge as well. Should have been a lot longer. He was longer. Really the heavy hitter because it was like, you know, oh crap, Rampage is here, everybody jump on him because he's the... the oh shit. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it's supposed to be like the, um... The tank. He was literally the tank. Yeah, I was, I was thinking something like Juggernaut slash, um... The I forgot what they were called, like Devastator, I think, for uh, or the General Transformers. Oh, the, the Annihilator, or no, the um, the four robots that combine together, the green, um, the green Decepticons, oh. the green and purple, they combine oh, to this oh, one. Oh, like the um, Destructicons. Yeah, I think it was called Devastator. I, I could be wrong. You're right, Devastator. Yeah, that's yeah, I, I guess that's what Rampage was, but I don't know. I just felt like it could have been a lot more. Intimidating. It's just, I don't know, if it wasn't utilized. Like, it's supposed to be this dangerous thing, and then after a while, everyone seems to be able to go one on one with him. Yeah, they, a lot of them have a tendency to get deep powered. And you know what I noticed is that some characters, even though they get like more upgrades, actually begin to suck more. But we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get more to them later. They get more visual, like they focus more on cosmetic <laughs> rather than. Yeah, it's like they, they got bigger upgrades, but they actually seem to suck more as fighters. <laughs> well, to be fair, in all throughout Beast Wars, especially in Season 1, there were multiple times where characters get... If you get jumped on, you usually, you usually get taken out pretty quickly. Like, um, true. like you have to watch out. I forgot which episode it was, but like, I think Scorponok or Tarantulas, one of them, like they took out Cheetor like fucking easy and he nearly died from me. <laughs> Cheetor sucks, man. <laughs> But it yes. almost everybody like Dinobot gets jumped by the spiders when they're in when they infiltrated the base. Also, his spiders okay. get shut down from the sky, and but, I don't but, know everybody. Everybody gets like yeah. one downtime at some point. <laughs> Heroes. Yeah. At least Dinobot doesn't suck. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no one's Dinobot does not suck. <laughs> but I guess uh, moving into the uh, well, Max, should we talk about first? Well, I don't know. I was thinking the big, the big, me- the big Megatron. <laughs> well, you want to talk about Megatron? Well, yeah. Megatron's like one of my favorite villains. Megatron's so, great. What I find fascinating is that he has like this right blend of evil and then also this really campy side. <laughs> yeah, like, sometimes you think he's not that evil. Sometimes he's just like kind of having fun being a guy with a little rubber ducky, and then other times he's like super evil as hell, like he's gonna wipe out everybody. Like I think I think that we learn there's like an early hint early on that we eventually see of all that is that Megatron's like a little insane. <laughs> It's a little insane because if you remember, there's peace between the Predacons and the Maximals, and he's like a terrorist renegade yeah. going off his own thing. So he's clearly not all there. Well, actually, there's one scene where um, it's in the Rhinox episode. He's in the beans when he's taking the antidote. Black Rhino is like, "We should destroy it." He goes, "No," he's like, "No, a a bargaining chip is is quite useful." Use, oh, fuck, I forgot to say, but it's quite useful in these situations. Yes, do you always talk to yourself? And then he responds by saying, I just like to have intellectual, intellectual, oh my god, intellectual conversations. <laughs> like, uh, oh uh, god. The ego is huge. Yeah, he's like, he wants to rule everything. I don't know, I, I guess the whole yes thing is like really the, the best yeah. part of him. That's, that's his most humorous side, how he just keeps going he's at it. He's also just like so sophisticated and quiet very posh very posh and but the thing is he can he can back it up all the fucking time <laughs> oh he's a beast too though yeah, yeah he, he can handle himself i mean shit <laughs> he's definitely like a big schemer he has the brain the brawn and the charisma i mean because well punch. i want to say he does have the charisma but every now and then every predacon doesn't like him <laughs> uh, well that's true but he, it's like they know that like they either they're afraid of him or they're like, he's on to something, maybe we can gain something by following. Yeah, it's like, well, he certainly has a vision we don't have, and he could yeah, probably pull it off. Yeah, like, he can see things we can't, <laughs> he can think beyond what we can see. Well, I guess the best part about his charisma is when, um, I forgot the name of that Decepticon, but that one with the the plant panther face that oh, turned into cassette. Oh, uh, Ravage. Yeah, Ravage, because uh, when he's handcuffed by him, and then he tells him, like, hey, I still got the disc, you know, <laughs> and then... Like, what if I were to tell you that this was a mission sent by the original Megatron, and then, boom. Predacons forever! (laughs) 
Yeah, um, yeah, when he just started the comedy, he just turned into a cassette tape. Yeah, he's so, like, so fuck yeah. So <laughs> Fuck yeah! It's like, fuck that, that, that was a pretty cool plot. We'll, we'll talk about it. Later. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just found that that was the best moment because he was completely. You should have been done <laughs> at that point. I was like, nope, nope. I still got a card to play. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. He, did it. he was able to turn like an original Decepticon to his side. Yeah, it's like because I am, I am his descendant. I will follow through the original Megatron's plan, <laughs> his yeah. vision. And then, even when they try to kill him, like, he's like, well, fuck. Actually, I found that so cool, also, the way, kind of disgusting, too, when he was taking the spark of the original Megatron, because the way he takes it out, it's like this tentacle thing, it's like, oh. Yeah. And then he goes inside his chest, and it's like, dangling with it. It made me think of something, like, out of the fly. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of creepy. Yeah, it was just like, like oh. And then he comes back as a dragon, but I'm not sure about the dragon design, because it looks kind of silly to me at the same time. Cool, like, silly and yeah. cool. I don't know. The dragon design looks cool, but that's probably the most blatant example of, yeah, they were just trying to sell a toy. That's not a natural evolution. You know, dragon <laughs> back in the past. What are you talking about? Dino the dragon. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't sure about that one. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm so so that. But then again, transfer the all the transmetals and then all the other forms have always been kind of like questionable whether it was a good update design or not. Because, I mean, well, in Megatron's case, his second transmetal. Um, or the first Transmetal, whatever, is that it's benefit because now he could fly. But I, 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 I wasn't I, I wasn't really sure about the design, though. Like, it was like a lot of brown and barely any purple. Uh, I think it looks cool. I mean, I'm kind of a traditionalist. Like, I generally like their first form of the best. Just because I think it matches. But I think he had one of the best Transmetal designs, personally. Yeah. I wasn't sure. But the, the, the Dragon one, I'm like, I'm not so sure about it. It can't help but find it just more like... Toyish, rather than actual, because well, because because yeah, I know it's a toy, but I don't, I don't know. It seemed like too much because something about it. Because uh, I think it's the head more than anything, because he has like this gigantic tail attached to his head, and mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I, well, he had the pictures though for his tail. That was kind of cool. Yeah, so I don't know. I feel mixed about it. I'm not sure, but uh, this is gonna be like I, I guess we should say this for a little later. But I did really like his uh, performance in Beast Machines, like even um, the actor, I can't remember his name, but I really grew to like him and I wish I could hear him in more stuff and I was surprised I was able to hear him in the Darkstalkers OVA, he's actually uh, playing Pyron, so the voice suited him pretty well, but in Beast Machines I noticed that he was there was no humor in him whatsoever by that point, but I, I just found it like, so menacing that even his voice performance just sounded like much more deeper. And definitely more dangerous. But it's like the ultimate like evolution. He like kind of went totally insane. Yeah, and went, also became like this full force. Yeah, you know? a complete machine. That was, that was this whole stick. And, like completely rejected his yeah, uh, dragon form, which is pretty awesome when he got it back again. Actually. Yeah, because I, I found that interesting. Like, because the performance in Beast Wars would be more be something on the lines of oh, "I'm going to destroy you now, Optimus." But in right. Beast Machines, it's more like, I will now destroy you, Optimus Primal. <laughs> it will eliminate your kind, that type of thing. So, I don't know, I can't, I can't portray his voice accurately, obviously, but he just sounds like like, like full-time villain. Like, uh, yeah, completely, completely evil, like in Beast Machines. That's one thing that really kind of surprised me. It's like he was having more fun being a bad guy in Beast Wars. Yeah, but here he just sees it more like it's a, a role that he must fulfill. Surprised to see your old nemesis, Optimus Primal? I believe we have some catching up to do. A few memory gaps to fill. Let's start with the Beast Wars. They are over. You lost. I control all of Cybertron. I am the future. I have forged this entire planet into a single elegant machine. A vision of technological purity and order. Billions of Transformers. Their extinguished sparks are on your hands. 